Hello and welcome to Archaeology 101. I'm going to be talking about something quite relevant to this cold wintry January, which is the prehistoric origins of clothing, where I'll be exploring the ideas and some of the evidence for how and why humans were able to develop clothing in the past. Humans evolved in Africa, which is a traditionally arid environment. And when humans first began to appear, they were hairy ape-like creatures like Australopithecines. But as time went on, they began to lose their hair, which probably began radically reducing from about 2.5 to 1.2 million years ago, which coincides with the evolution of Homo erectus. So they were losing this dense protective blanket of hair that they had covering their bodies which protected them from heat and the cold so they had to make decisions to create artificial layering which would protect them from both the hot and the cold and more sensitive parts of the body and as humans began to migrate to colder environments such as Asia and Europe this artificial layering would become more and more important because you could not survive in minus 10 degrees without some sort of artificial clothing and Europe had numerous climate fluctuations which were both hot and cold events um, which could mean Britain for example would be a savanna but then equally a thousand years later it might become an arctic desert and I'll show you a diagram later which shows some of those glacial interglacial events like the Eemian or marine isotope stage 5e or MIS3 as well. There have been some arguments that uh, earlier humans such as Neanderthals were ready-made hyperarctic beings who had vast stores of subcutaneous fats underneath their skin which provided natural insulation but the modeling on on fat insulation has been very limited and it shows that there's not all that much benefit for when a temperature reaches minus 10 you do need some form of artificial clothing it's proven very difficult for archaeologists to infer direct evidence of clothing use in deep prehistory, so they've had to rely a lot on climate modelling and ice core data to suggest when clothing would be a necessity, and I will show you that diagram to show you a bit more what I mean in a moment. The archaeological record is not great either, so about 170,000 to 80,000 years ago in Africa, it was discovered that the human head louse split into the body louse. So these things can only live on the body and they're genetically distinct from the head louse. And that means that some form of artificial clothing layering would have to have been used to keep these lice alive. Uh, but there is much older evidence that clothing would have been used. In the late 90s, it was suggested that some stone scrapers may indicate clothing at least 780,000 years ago. That's quite an old date, but scrapers are a very generic tool and they don't necessarily dictate that they've been used to make clothing. They can be used for an entire variety of things. So I don't know how much credence we can give to this hypothesis. We can look and make inferences as well on hide bearing animals in Neanderthal assemblages like reindeer or buffalo, for example. Interestingly, 60,000 years ago, in the Denisovan cave in Siberia, it was discovered that the Denisovans could make eyed needles, which could be used to sew clothing together. But again, quite a young date. And furthermore, there has been evidence of Neanderthal string or slash cordage 40,000 years ago. Again, quite a young date, but it does show you how technologically advanced that these ancient humans actually were. I'll just quickly go over how climate modeling works. So the diagram you see here is about marine isotope stages. And this is modeling of the ratios of oxygen 18, which is a heavy oxygen isotope. And the rise or fall of oxygen 18 and ice cores shows us roughly when climate change happened. So we can look at 5E, for example, MIS5E, uh, the Eemian. You can see there's very low amount of oxygen 18 which indicates that the temperatures was very warm at this time and then if you move downwards to look at mis3 for example it's getting a lot colder and you can look throughout prehistory there how climate has fluctuated and it's reached some incredible lows so humans within 600 
thousand years ago were dealing with some extremely cold temperatures which would mean that they would have to have had clothing inside Europe at the time. What clothing looked like in deep prehistory has been an age-old question. The general public has maybe been slightly misled by what the media puts out in its news articles about ancient humans. So the image on the right, the right top hand corner, which quite embarrassingly was from the Natural History Museum, shows what typically you might expect to see in one of these articles about ancient humans. So there's a, a naked, hairy ape person in the bottom corner, and then there's another one, but wearing a Paleolithic pair of pants in the top corner. This may not be completely inaccurate, however, and I'm sure during the more arid parts of Africa, there may have been necessity to wear only minimal clothing which protected your sensitive parts from the, the sun and maybe the brush as well. But at the same time, you're going to need something to protect your bare skin from the sunlight because it will damage you. And Ian Gilligan's work has been quite revolutionary. So he has a model in the middle page here, which you can see, where he breaks clothing down into simple and complex. So simple clothing is just an animal skin or a fur which has minimal processing. So maybe you tie together various different skins to make a, a larger cloak using certain tools. And then complex clothing is where you tailor that clothing into more finer parts so they fit the body more perfectly. So in the bottom right hand corner, there's an image of the Sungir bearer, which is an upper Paleolithic bearer, and he has personal adornments. But ignore that. Look at how his clothing fits him perfectly. That's tailored clothing, which is more efficient than just simply draping over a cape like clothing, which Rob Hosfield has suggested. But the cape would still be effective at keeping you warm. But that tailored fit clothing may only have been a sapiens invention. However, we've already talked about Denisovan needles and Neanderthal string, so I would push back maybe on the ideas that these are simple and they may have been more complex and layered than we're thinking, but it might not have been quite the perfectly tailored thing that we can see in the Sungir burial, but nonetheless important. So I hope it's clear that we have many problems in the preservation of the evidence for ancient human clothing. We don't have any preserved mummies which have clothing yet, although the quite frankly fluky nature of how the Neanderthal string from Avery du Maras came around was quite incredible and that shows us how minuscule evidence can be that completely overthrows how we view a human species. That was absolutely amazing, that discovery, because it completely demonstrates that we've been underestimating for a very long time the abilities of ancient humans and probably before Neanderthals as well. However, indirect indicators are not enough to unequivocally prove the use of clothing. So the, the example of the scrapers, that doesn't really help tell us anything about clothing use. So there's a lot of issues to overcome. Uh, archaeological sites and the funding to research them are, is very few. It's very difficult to get this funding and it takes time as well, but I'm sure in the years to come we'll have more and more evidence of human clothing. The best examples of preserved clothing we have come from a few examples, but in later prehistory. So, for example, the linen Tarkin dress from Egypt shows clothing from 3,482 years ago, but that's way after clothing would have been first used. And we also have the interesting case of Otzi the Iceman from the Italian Alps, who was a preserved ice mummy. And he also had lots of clothing which had implications on how we view clothing at this time as well. But they're simply not old enough to tell us what ancient human clothing would have looked like. This has been quite brief, but I hope it's been informative. So let's just reflect on some of the conclusions that this video has made. So we've seen that clothing would have had to have been used in Eurasia by humans due to the climate conditions there, such as the marine ice stage three, uh, and they were probably used in some capacity in Africa. But what forms that takes has been up to a lot of discussion. So probably cape-like clothing in 
cold conditions. So that was Ian Gilgan's idea of simple, in air quotes, clothing. But that may have varied in style depending on the seasons. And there may have been some limited tailoring as well. We just don't quite know because the evidence is severely lacking. But archaeologists are working all the time. And I'm sure in the next few years we'll have some great discoveries which might shed some more light on what I've spoken about today. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this video and I hope it was informative. I'm going to leave the bibliography and the figures in the description so you can click those more easily. And I encourage everyone to go do their own research on this subject. It's best to get your uh, sources from multiple different areas rather than just one. Uh, if you're interested a little about where I've been, uh, I've been working quite hard out in the field in commercial archaeology. Uh, that's been taking up a lot of my time because I've been doing away jobs. Uh, I've also been applying for a PhD fund as well, but whether I'll get it or not, time will only tell. But maybe in the future I'll be a doctor in archaeology. So that's more or less what I've been up to. So that's taken up quite a lot of my time. So I can't make videos very easily, only when I have a few spare moments and when I have the house free to myself. So I hope you understand. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time on Archaeology 101.